sign NPCL pledges to produce 2 million barrels of crude oil daily. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The newly appointed board and management team for the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, on Monday pledged to produce 2 million barrels of crude oil daily from 2024. The non-executive board chairman of NNPCL, Paos Akinye Lure, stated this while briefing state house correspondents shortly after the inauguration of the board by President Bola Tinubu. Mr. Akinye Lure also promised that the board would overhaul the security architecture of the NMPCL to curb incidents of stealing and vandalization of pipelines. Joining us are lawyer Are Olado Tumazan and international oil and gas expert and public affairs analyst Nika Gule. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. It's a pleasure to hear your program, sir. Thank you very much. Quite an honor. Same here. Uh, Nick, how, how would you respond to the remark of the newly sworn and uh, sworn in chair of the board Can of? You Can you hear me? I can hear you. I said, I said, what would be your response to uh, Chief Akin Lure's uh, remark? Okay, good, good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. Go ahead. Yes, sorry. Did you put a question to me? Yes, I asked you that what would be your response to Chief Akinye Lure's remark that they will be making, uh, producing 2 million barrels daily from next year and that they will revamp the security architecture of the oil producing area, I guess, uh, I guess it meant. So what would be your response to that? Okay, thank you very much. My response is that the NMPC TL chairman statement is not clear because the NMPC is a company, it's a business that also produces crude oil. And Nigeria as a country also produces crude oil by other operators. So these two million barrels is the NMPC speaking on behalf of the entire oil industry in Nigeria, made up of international oil companies like the Chevrons, the Shell, the Mobus, the Totals, and indigenous companies, or he speaks. Speaking only about NMPC of the oil industry in Nigeria, I wonder what is giving him that pedestal to be able to speak on behalf of the oil and gas industry in Nigeria, because he is just a board chairman of one company. Uh, uh, somebody listening to you may want to say he's not a board chairman of all the other crude producers in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, somebody listening to you may want to say, but NMPC is in a peculiar position because NMPC has joint venture relationships with virtually all exploration companies in Nigeria. That's, that makes NMPC to, to be unique when it comes to uh, so, exploration and exploitation in, of oil in Nigeria. Okay, so for me, that is an anomaly in the sense that uh, the NMPC, as you have already said, is the one managing the joint venture relations with the international oil companies and other indigenous co companies that are in partnership with the government of Nigeria. But that is not all of Nigeria's production because there are other production activities in Nigeria that are not under the joint ventures. There are some that are under the production sharing contract arrangement and things like that. So the NMPC chairman cannot be speaking for 
the oil industry in Nigeria. And I think this has been the basis of a problem we have had for a long time. The NMPC is a company, and they are expected to run their business profitably and deliver dividends to Nigeria, just like their sister company, the NLNG, is doing. But the NMPC, by the current arrangement, takes crude production made on behalf of Nigeria by all the other international oil companies, sells this crude oil, and then spends the money the way they like it, and it is what is left that they bring to the Federation account. And as we know, in recent times, the NMPC has not been bringing much to the Federation account. If President Tinubu wants to reform the oil industry, the first thing he needs to do is take the NMPC away from Nigeria's crude oil production. The NMPC as a company has its own crude production arm, which is called the Nigerian Petroleum Development Company Limited. That company is based in Benin. Their head office is on Sapley Road in Benin. I know them very well. That is NMPC crude production arm. And NMPC should produce their own crude. If they don't produce crude and they don't refine anything as they are doing now, they should die of hunger. This whole okay. idea let, of let, carrying let me, let me crude production. Let, 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 oh, I'll yes. come back to you. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Let me give your colleague, uh, Barista. Uh, what would yes. be your response? What would be your response to the remark of uh, Chief Akin Elure? Well, uh, you know, is a is a mix is a mix uh, expectations. Uh, considering where we are coming from, considering the the um, the the I will call it the opaque approach in dealing with the petroleum and oil and gas sector of this country which has been there from time immemorial from the inception of NMPC to date. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot agree and unagreeably discuss the issue of um, NMPC audit itself. Do we really have a record of what NMPC is making? Then how do we even know that we are not even producing more than 2 million barrels a day when we don't even have a, a, a proper record of what we produced before? And I must, I must beg to disagree. We are equally getting to this fix, uh, quick fix uh, syndrome that one size fits all. That once the NMPC said we are producing two million barrels, just one private oil well and oil rig in one um, um, uh, uh, in the in the in the Delta Creek is producing more than what we are talking about. What is the aggregate production of all the oil wells that we have? We have various oil wells producing at various end. How is NMPC managing a license to private um, owners of uh, oil well? How do we even arrive at the total amount of uh, total uh, oil reserve that we are having? Who is managing it? Yes, we have a specific department that is managing the, 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 the extraction of oil. Then NMPC itself being, um, having um, um, become a private entity, there is a need to expand the whole responsibility and national position of the country within a private firm. Because we cannot have a firm that is um, operating under the, the Kama Act as a private limited liability company, still operating in national assets, using a national asset. There must be proper JV as definitely as a consultant to the federal government. What is the sole responsibility of the of the board of the directors of NMPCCL? What is the role of board of the of, of the of the board of the NMPC itself being appointed by the president? So there's a board of trustee of the company. As the board of company starts to appoint the NMPC chairman, that is uh, Mr. Aki Elure. Is there a resolution? There must have been because when all these corporate um, laws and corporate arm of the company is not being properly situated. We just running a banana uh, republic um, um, approach, the uh, before brigade approach. And we have, we, our country needs to think in the direction of how Saudi Arabia and all other oil producing countries are managing their oil. They don't manage oil as if we are selling um, pepper and uh, meat on the roadside. We need to have 
a problem. There is nothing stopping us from having a, a center point and a, an IT center point that will tell how many of our oil, how many of tanks leaving the petrol um, uh, de uh, depot, who are who is getting the uh, oil, who are who is um, doing the, 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 the. Now we have a, a lot of smuggling going on. Smuggling have not stopped. Barista, no, 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 so, no, 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 can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, from the way you are sounding, you are sounding quite disillusioned. You don't even believe that the environment created for Akin Elure, irrespective of his experience, uh, can make him succeed because you see structural, you see structural dysfunctionality in the make, in the makeup of NMPC. You see opacity. In the in his uh, in his work uh, ethics and culture, you are not quite very pleased. Am I? Is my summary right of your position? Yes, yes, we are on the same page on that. There is no clear cut um, responsibility because we are talking about we have an MD of a company in person of Yari. Uh, we also equally have a chairman of the of his own board. And uh, we, are, we have to equally note that there is still a legal tussle about the ownership of the NMPC by some persons who also believe that they have right to determine what goes in and out. So we cannot approve and reprobate. There is a need to set out a clear cut national agenda uh, on our own. Legal tussle, legal tussle, please enlighten our public. I, I can't just let yes. you work. Uh, what yes. do you mean yes. by legal tussle of ownership of NMPC? Yes. Yes, um, 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 I, I want to recall the name of this. Um, the former chairman, um, the former, ch the former defenestrated chairman uh, from Aimo State. Uh, you mean? Yes. Uh, it's not about the ownership. You know, about his position. As no, we have to we have to look at everything. If you don't have a legal a legal positioning, I can go to court tomorrow. And just make an originating uh, someone to to query what is happening in the NMPC because of the current legal positioning, and you, that's what I'm saying. You should know better. Yeah, you should know need. better because you're a lawyer. I can argue with you yes. because you're yes. a lawyer. But yes, there is a need. There is a need for us to um, for the president to come out with a blueprint of his vision in the oil and gas sector, so that will not be caught in the web of um, uh, money being siphoned. Have, okay, um, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me go to Nick now. Yes. Nick? Yeah. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Nick, I'm here, yes. If I thought if I thought your your position was a bit gloomy about NMPC L, uh, it does seem that your colleague's position is gloomier. And your colleague is even making me believe now that there are structural deformities, there are legal issues to look at. And uh, one would have thought that President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu as an oil man himself, with, you know, with a pedigree in the industry, ought to have known better. And if there were to be, be need for structural reformation and some other uh, governance, governance uh, issues, he should have taken care of, of those ones before appointing is uh, is former line manager at Mobile, uh, Chief Akin Elure. What's your take of all this? Okay, so the NNPC is a nail on the neck of Nigeria's petroleum industry. It's <laughs> My God, sad, but that is the truth. <laughs> Nick, if, if you Nick, you are killing them with the big amount. Them at night time, no, no, no. I will explain. I will explain this clearly. Yes, and and if they are listening to us, or they happen to come and watch a clip of this interview at any time, they have a right to reply. 
And if they want us to sit in a debate, we can sit in that debate. I worked in the oil industry for over 20 years. I have worked for three of the top four global oil companies in Nigeria and overseas. So I'm fully abreast with the issues and I know what I'm speaking about. And when I say the NNPC is the nail on the neck of Nigeria's petroleum industry, I mean exactly that. And I can explain. If you think back to the days of NITEL and telephones, NITEL was the nail on the neck of telephones in Nigeria. And immediately the government of Nigeria decided to remove that nail. That is, take away telephone business from NITEL and hand it to serious business concerns like the MTNs and the Airtels and the GLOWs, you can now see that the telephone industry in Nigeria is now breathing. That same telephone industry that the Minister of Communication said was not for the poor, now the poorest of the poor have their handsets in their hand. They may not have a smartphone, but at least they have a phone they are communicating with. And we now have about 200 million lines of telephone activated in Nigeria, whereas in United States, we're talking about a few hundred thousands. So the same thing will happen to the oil industry if President Tinubu lifts the need of NMPC off the neck of the petroleum industry in Nigeria. And let me tell you the reason. Number one, NMPC has two, two businesses that he's doing, actually three businesses. He's doing uh, crude oil production, and that is not from the joint ventures on its own as a company. Is doing refining and is doing gas. Let us ask ourselves: What is NMPC as a business doing in these three business areas? Crude production, like I said, MPDC, which is NMPC crude production arm. The last time I checked, they were doing probably like a hundred thousand barrels per day of these two million we're talking about, given the amount and quantum of resources available to the NMPC. Is that what they are doing? That same NMPC has been exploring for crude oil in the northern part of Nigeria since I was born. Have they produced a single barrel of crude oil from all the efforts and the costs and the billions of dollars sunk into exploration in Chad, in Lake Chad, in Benway Trout, in Niger Trout, in Gongola Basin? Not one barrel has been produced as a company. Would they have been in existence if not that they are living off the charity of Nigerians? That is crude, nothing from them. Let's go to refining. The NMPC has four refineries in Nigeria. As we speak, the last time a single liter of petrol came off any refinery was back in 2018. For five years, NMPC has produced zero liters of any petroleum product in Nigeria. The same NMPC now goes to Singapore, to Rotterdam, to, to, to Houston, all over the world, bringing in petrol at expensive rates and forcing it through the throat of Nigerians. Can we say that company is not a nail on the neck of Nigerians? And by NMPC so doing that, they are the ones damaging the foreign exchange market in Nigeria. Because as we speak, every liter of petroleum product that is being sold in, in Naira will be converted to dollars so that we will go and import. And the NMPC has allowed our foreign refineries to die. When you talk about gas, NMPC with the joint venture partners are flaring Nigeria's gas as we speak. Go to Niger Delta, gas is on fire. But that gas is what is supposed to have been used for electricity generation. Nigeria, a country of 200 million people, is generating and supplying 3,000 megawatts of electricity. 3,000 megawatts is what UAE, where the president recently came back from, is supplying to 1 million people. So if we were supplying Electricity, just like U UAE, we should have been supplying 600,000 megawatts to 200 million people. We're supplying 3,000. Can NMPC be said not to be the nail on the neck of Nigeria petroleum industry? I believe everybody will agree with me. Okay, what would be, what would be your suggestion to Mr. President at this juncture? Because we can diagnose the problem from here to Mongolia. Uh, but uh, it would be reasonable for us to also trade some ideas on how to rescue or how to remove this nail from the neck of Nigerians. I agree with you totally that we are Nigerians who are already accustomed to all the problems in Nigeria. 
So we should be spending time on solutions. And the very first solution I would suggest to Mr. President is the crude oil being produced by the joint ventures of which the Nigerian government has got either 55%, 50 or uh, 60% share should be taken away from the NMPC. That's the first thing he has to say to do. Either Mr. President creates a department in the presidency or the, the Federal Minister of Petroleum Resources for which is the minister should be responsible for taking hold, taking delivery of the crude being produced by our joint venture partners, selling it and banking it intact so that Mr. President will be looking at that money. The NMPC has been taking the share of those joint venture crude, selling it and using it to pay humongous salaries to NM NMPC are one of the highest uh, any people in Nigeria producing almost nothing refining zero and here getting promotions in that place so first president does that okay. NMPC will not be left as a top okay. sorry Go ahead. The, NMPC is, the NMPC is now left as a company that they are to swim or to sink so if they don't produce good oil, okay. they have no money. Okay. If they okay. don't refine anything, they have let, no money. Let, let me go to Barista. If they don't Dottum. have any gas, they have nothing. Let, 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 me, let me go to yes. Barista Dotu. Uh, uh, Barista Dotu Azan. Yes, sir. Uh, your, your colleague is, uh, is prescribing uh, a, a sink or swim solution for NMPC. Uh, what would be your angle to this now? Well, the basic thing is that uh, we have always been looking at the angle of oil as the only prime solution to our economic woes. Is until when we begin to decentralize our extractive industry from the constitution angle down to state, let resources of NMPC itself, let it go down to various state that is producing. Let there be this competition. We cannot continue to have NMPC uh, running without having detailed knowledge of where these oils are being produced by the community and other issues that are that are rolling around the the, the, the PIA Act is there. The three percent of the community, the oil producing community, they are not getting it. Whatever rules of engagement that the NMPC have drawn all this while, we are not seeing anything on the table. So the basic thing is that Mr. President must come up with a national holistic plan on the oil and gas industry at the at the council of states they need to review and come up with a more amenable solution this um this um militarized section of how we have seen nmpc nmpc to some to many is not a gamut atm card that they are using to single us so to me the continuous existence of nmp itself is an abattruise to our development let us see how resources will be definitely managed by states. Let us see the resources of all these regions be managed by them and let them be the one contributing certain percentage. At that time, we we'll get a whole uh, 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 but, value but, but, but Baisa, for but Baisa, whatever Baisa, we have to do. Uh, the, uh, Baisa, it might look so archaic, it might look so drowning, but if you don't go back, to the, to, the, to the places this extract, if you don't have a national resource management um, commission, uh, but, whereby every national resources that is being generated, we are looking at oil and gas. Other extractive uh, I know, I know, I know, Mr. Hello, Mr. Azan. You are, are not leaving the point. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, Mr. Azan. You are speaking to an issue that we fundamentally require constitutional amendment not, not necessarily constitutional amendment in its own it's not a matter of resolution at the council of state this is a state they can declare a national emotion nigeria can de decide the solution today without us going into the constitutional modus operandi because majorly at the way we are managing the oil and gas we are not even following the dictate of the law we are only trying to drive, we are, we are managing this with just one myopic um, 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 interest of who to be at the end of affairs and how the continuity of how things are being done to be continued. 
So if we really need a proper change, I believe in the wealth of experience of Mr. Aki Elure. He's been in the oil and gas industry for decades. He should be able to come up, not just to come up with this press statement. This press statement of assurance of 200 million has been the same thing we got from Deziani, has been the same thing we got from um, um, Kupoloku, has been the same thing we've been got getting from the NMPC from Tiny Memoria. Yet, 2 million barrels will be drawn every day, but there will not be record of sales. So how do we begin to 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 talk about uh, what fraud? But, but why but why are we the two of you don't seem to be speaking to 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 the eye of the bull? And the reason why I'm saying that is that the president, as at the last time I checked, be it under a passenger, you know, for a long while, uh, be, except uh, President Yadua and uh, and uh, Jonathan. Under, under Buari for eight years, and the incumbent too has continued the culture. The president is the substantive minister of petroleum. So, uh, why are we blaming everybody else and not blaming the principal? No, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are talking the same thing here. Is that the, 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 the president needs to come up with a solution? We are running this oil and gas industry like a paper market, which ought not to be. We don't have a national um, model, model. Let us go and learn. I've already said we have a model in Saudi Arabia that they are already working on and it's working for them. If it can work for all these nations, our oil is now becoming a huge impediment to our growth as a nation. Our oil, even for the fact that there is removal of oil subsidy, you can still recall that recently IMF is still telling us that it should remove um, subsidy and increase fuel to 750 per liter. NFPC ought not even be the one regulating price. There's nothing that, no, this whole thing, if it is being thrown open, just like my brother have just rightly said, that let the market be open. Let us create tra um, transparency. Let us have a proper management of resource. Nick. Hello, Nick. Yes, sir. Uh, it, it, does seem, it does seem that, uh, uh, you know, your recommendations or your ideas, for those ideas to work, we need to be talking to a gentleman who is not an ordinary minister, but a super-duper minister. And he also holds the title of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we are having all these distortions, we are having all this aberrative uh, scenario under a man that cannot be easily criticized. Are you going to agree with uh, the former, the 14th or 16th Emir of Kano, uh, who is of the opinion that uh, about time the president appointed a substantive minister of uh, petroleum so that uh, it could be criticized if there is a need to criticize him, and it could be commended if there is need to commend him or her. How would you respond yes. to that? Yes, Mr. President, you know, it is, it, we have this, um, um, actually, Bola Ahmed Tunubu is someone who I respect so much, and I place a high premium on his capacity and intelligence. But there, there are some certain things he need not uh, consolidate upon that have been led by the, the, the previous administration of President Mohamed Dubai, former president, that being the Minister of Petroleum is an aberration to the office of the president itself. Because if you need to summon an immediate, um, if I need to summon the minister, Mr. President, we need to remove his um, immunity. He cannot begin to hold immunity to strangulate the ministry because there must always be issue. Okay, Mr. Azan, Mr. Azan, let me, Mr. let me go to your colleague now. Nick, are you still there? Yes, I am here. Oh, uh, Nick, what would be your take of uh, the suggestion of the former Emir of Kanu regarding letting somebody that can be accountable uh, to to say Parliament? The, the I agree with the former 
agree with the the emir of uh, the former emir of Kano. I agree with him totally. Is uh, the the president holding on to the portfolio of a petroleum minister is unnecessary because the president, every minister in Nigeria is actually doing the president's job. We elected the president. We didn't elect the ministers. It's because the constitution forces the hands of the president that he must appoint ministers and is indeed the right thing for the president to have people to help him do the job because the job is big. If the president can give the whole of Nigeria's money in control, in, in the control of the minister of finance, then what is big, what's big about the, what's special about the petroleum industry portfolio that he wants to hold on to? Nigeria president is so busy. Look at Nigeria president sorting out river state problem, meeting traditional rulers, meeting this and that. An American president doesn't do that. I mean, there are some governors in America that never ever go to Washington to see the president. No traditional rulers, no crisis in state. And we have a man that is so busy, he has only 24 hours. And at his age, you know, he, he just needs to let the portfolio go. But uh, uh, even if he holds onto the portfolio, Nigeria has to quickly move to a private sector led economy. The, this NNPC that we're talking about, I used to work for the oil industry in Nigeria. I work for Chevron and Shell in Nigeria. And I can assure you that the, the government participation in the joint ventures was itself a problem. Because if the joint ventures make a budget, that this is the budget that we are going to use to produce X amount of barrels of crude oil, the government hardly finds the money to make their own contribution to that joint venture funding. And the work program and, and, and budget for that uh, <coughs> oil company, that joint venture operator, is more rebound. But if the government lets all this thing into the private sector, the private sector will source the funding, they will expand Nigeria's uh, crude oil production, and we will not, we'll not be talking about four, I mean, 2 million barrels. We can be talking about 4 million, 5 million barrels. We have the capacity for that. And we even have bigger capacity for gas. Today, the NNG is doing 27. We could by now have fired some more other LNG companies. There's nothing wrong with having 10 LNGs in Nigeria tapping from our gas resources because gas, the world agrees that gas is a transition fuel. And it's something we have in abundance, even much more than crude oil. And we should be taking advantage of that. And the only way we can take advantage of that is by putting this in the private sector. Let me give you an example before I stop at this point. Have we ever heard that Nigeria produced zero barrels of crude oil any day? Answer is no. Since I was born, we only talk about reduced production. It has never gone to zero. What is the reason? The reason is that private sector is the one that is producing crude oil in Nigeria majorly. But the downstream business that we have handed over to NMPC, the government department, government-owned company, zero production, zero refining, nothing. So you can just imagine that if upstream, which requires more money and more technical expertise, is given to the NMPC, we will also come down to zero production of crude oil, I can assure you. So that is a clear indication that the private sector will do it better. And it's time for the government to step back as a regulator, look at the industry, reform it. We talked about Petroleum Industry Act. I think that was late in the day. We should have been talking about Energy Industry Act. Who is talking about petroleum? Now, they gathered in Dubai and they were saying, oh, petroleum as fossil fuels should be phased out. So as a country, we should be talking about Energy Industry Bill so that we can have a holistic industry uh, ground norm that we Tap from renewable sources and from fossil fuel sources. These are the kind of things Mr. President needs to be dealing with. Ah, uh, Mr. Azan. Yes, sir. I want us to be going in the direction of suggestions now because we'll soon be wrapping up the the program. Uh, from this point, what would be the ideas you want to be putting on the table for uh, the president, uh, the board of NMPC, and the management of NMPC, with a view to culture change uh, and uh, increased 
transparency. You were the one that used the word pig before. And I guess, uh, I guess. Yes, I, I, yes, I, will, I, I will still retreat that uh, the appointment is without no exact um, uh, marching orders. The appointments are the critical point of our oil and gas industry. The Mr. President, I know, needs to go back to his ballroom to review his interest and how to solve the oil and gas problem. It is a multi-dimensional challenge, and it is not a one-size-fits-all. We need to come up with an holistic plan of action with immediate, with immediate um, accelerated um, implementation, because we always have the good laws. We have every policy plan, but to implement is an issue because of the impediment and the and the and the bureaucracy that we are all equally we have laid down. The, the mines, the landmines are just there all around. The corruption. The, the, the cabals, these issues are there. So, Mr. President needs to not to be afraid of anything. He is already the president. All what we need now is to decentralize that sector, give it a life of its own, bring in real and capable investors, not just all our local uh, politicians just sharing oil well to themselves, and they don't even have capacity to drill. They will still go and sub sublet and, um, and have more sub um, sub agreement with with extractive companies, and that is like a double barrage of challenge. You don't give something to who don't have capacity to manage. We have a, a lot of people in the oil and gas industry that are myopic and know nothing about the entire oil and gas. So, Mr. President needs to really draw the right channel of people to come in. Let us have. That energy law, just as my colleague has rightly said, is not just petroleum we are talking about. We are talking about the entire resources within the energy sector. We need to have a plan. We ought not to be on 3,000 megawatt assignation. We can man a million megawatts if we really know what we are doing. Energy sources and petroleum are what President needs to take the importance because the management of the oil and gas industry is, in, is, in, is, an, is an amalgam of over four or three ministries. Ministry of Mines and, 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 and must be involved. Ministry of Power must be involved. This Ministry of, 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 of Petroleum must also be involved. Because I, I, I think for, for tonight, for tonight uh, Barista Azan, for tonight we are addressing uh, NMPCL specifically because of the remark of Chief Ake Lure. So let's uh, let's keep our eye on the no, ball. No, 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 we are not leaving the we are not leaving the issue. The solution might be very is why they not beyond Mr. Ake Lure. His office to just be in charge of that office of NMPC without looking at the holistic field, covering the field. If you have to look at the principle of covering the field Every department that necessarily needs to be involved in the oil and gas industry, there must be a major of force to break this for Nigerians to benefit, for us to set a timeline. These are not just a, a dash race that we want to run. These are things that will still take us about a decade to really get rightly because we are drowning. Okay, let me, let me go to your colleague. Uh, Nick. Yes, sir. Uh, Nick. Uh, Chief Aki Elure further said that uh, the security architecture will be reviewed in the backdrop of the fact that... Uh, I'm managing oil and selling of the oil. No. Uh, no excuse, me, excuse, me, excuse me, Barista. I, 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 the question is for Nick. Uh, Nick. Hello, yes, Nick. Sir. Yeah. Uh, Chief Aki Elure further said that uh, the security architecture will be reviewed and improved upon. I'm wondering which security architecture, the one that uh, Navy and Tantina every day accuse each other of, uh, of theft, or, or the one where we know that there are hundreds, according to the managing director, the group managing director of NMPC in front of the, in, in, uh, one of the committees of the National Assembly saying that uh, there are more than hundreds of uh, illegal tapping points 
of the so what was your was your response to the so called architecture being 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 reviewed and strengthened if the security architecture uh, uh, in the Niger data where we are producing crude oil is to be reviewed, it is not the NMPCS chairman's remit to announce it or speak about it because he does not control any security apparatus at all. He, as operator, will have to convey his challenges of which security is one of them to the appropriate quarters, and those quarters are Mr. President. So it would have been better for him to be telling Mr. President about his challenges and asking the President to intervene to restore security so that the NMPC and the other operators in the Niger Delta can carry out their operations unhindered. So the way he's speaking, he, I, I don't know what, what he thinks his position is. Look, he's a, a chairman of one of the operators in the oil industry in Nigeria. I, you know, a lot of people think that the NMPC is like a regulator of the oil industry. No, the NMPC is not a regulator of the oil industry. NMPC is not even a spokesperson for the oil industry. The NMPC is a, is a player in the oil industry. The regulator is the upstream commission and the downstream authority. But the uh, chief is coming across as if he is the, uh, the, the, the overall person Gent talking gentlemen. about 2 million barrels when he should be talking about his own company's production. Gentlemen. You know, talking about security. When he should be talking about <laughs> the security agencies to come in with their Gent security gentlemen. Uh, 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 Mrs. Agule and Azan, I want to say a thank you. Thank you very much for your virtual presence on the show uh, today. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. We'll have some other opportunities to engage with your very, very uh, resoundingly solid minds. Thank you.